Hi Jitendra sir. Hello. Hi. How are you? Yeah, fine, sir. Thank you. Can you so, hear me properly? We have uh, Jitain Parmar sir and Nitin S Dharmaut sir from Orem Capital. I welcome them both uh, and thank you, sir, for agreeing to our demand. And uh, I sincerely appreciate your. Uh, I mean, you people understand your social responsibility and help us retailers uh, big time by educating with your experiences. So, guys, uh, let me take uh, the moment to introduce our uh, guest for today. So, Jitain sir is a known entrepreneur and he is a passionate long-term investor since 1993. Initially, he was in U.S. market, but uh, since 2002 onwards, he is uh, tracking Indian markets and he is uh, basically a value investor who looks after, uh, who looks for small and mid-cap uh, focused investing. and he understand the business cycles and, and accordingly uh, prepare strategies to invest in cyclicals and commodity stocks so over three decades of experience of jitain sir and likewise for nitin sir he had uh, previously worked in various roles and very rich experience he had worked with crisel and he was in lnt previously and he also focuses on uh, identifying value in public markets with, with long term orientation and also small and mid cap stocks with sound fundamentals and uh, he understand uh, i'm basically look out for multi baggers and uh, the commodity and uh, cyclical stocks so welcome sir welcome and uh, recently uh, team oram completed 4 years and uh, oram capital is a sebi registered investment advisory and since its inception it has given a cagr of 25.7% which is approximately 150 in terms of ab absolute returns so with this i welcome my guest and sir over to you any opening remarks or yeah so uh, it's great to be on spaces uh, and uh, it's always uh, nice to you know basically share uh, our experiences uh, and uh, we are looking forward to this spaces uh, uh, so we can start right away yeah hey great uh, thank you pins for organizing this and uh, thank you everyone to join uh, it's always pleasure to talk to uh, the fellow investors and share whatever we have learned from the market and also learn from the experiences of uh, fellow investors thank you for organizing this all uh, right sir So, sir, uh, we'll be uh, like we already have some questions. I have jotted down, so I'll be asking those questions, and then we uh, uh, take speaker requests from audiences, and uh, likewise we will take the questions. So, sir, to begin with, uh, like you people are known for cyclical. So, my question would be like, how one should go about cyclicals? Like, cyclicals means everybody cannot understand, but if a layman or say a new investor has to. So for cyclicals, how the approach should be? Yeah, so I mean, uh, in various uh, forums, uh, I have talked a lot about cyclicals. See, cyclicals is nothing but you know uh, value investing. To, uh, to be honest, uh, the the thing is that there are you know uh, deep cyclicals uh, like the commodity companies and all that, and there are uh, the other companies are uh, you know something like FMCG is less cyclical. uh now we have to understand that cyclical uh, doesn't mean only business cycle there are primarily three cycles which uh, investors should be aware of one is the business cycle uh, one is market cycle and the third is economic cycle and uh, uh, almost all stocks are affected by one or more of these cycles so understanding of cycles uh, i think is very important Uh, even if you don't want to invest in you know the deep cyclicals uh, or the commodity cyclicals but uh, even even non supposedly non cyclical companies do have market cycles and are affected by economic cycles so understanding of cycles is very very important uh, is what i think uh, and accordingly you know uh, the thing is that you know the kind of uh, returns and drawdowns in the deep cyclicals will be very high so when the cycle is good uh you know they will uh, give much uh you know higher returns whereas when the cycle is in downturn they will fall a lot more uh against uh, the the less cyclical companies 
Uh, so, uh, but then uh, the less less cyclical companies will also uh, have are are very much affected by market cycles uh, primarily. So one has to understand that and uh, see. Eventually, it all boils down to you know understanding the sectors, uh, looking at the valuations, uh, and uh, always uh, we always try to you know. Uh, uh, basically play with uh, you know a risk reward in mind in the sense that you know what is my downside and how much upside i can do uh, in a particular stock or in a sector uh, so that's how that's how we go about it i mean there are uh, uh, you know uh, there's there's lot of uh, understanding that is required because you, you not only have to understand the business you also have to understand the cycles uh, of the business as well as you know uh keep a track of the market cycles uh, right sir so nitin sir i have seen you on various former forums you always uh, focus on behavioral aspect of investing so how we can condition it uh, to our advantage so yeah absolutely so uh, see investing is uh, more than 90% i would say is behavioral and less than 10% is uh, you know understanding uh the financials behavior is uh, extremely important in the market uh both from you know understanding the individual companies our protecting our interest in individual companies uh, as well as our reactions uh, uh to what happens in the market and if we are able to control our nerves then we avoid lot of mistakes and if we are able to avoid a lot of those common mistakes uh if, you know we make a uh, uh, significant amount of uh, money in the market uh, for example uh you know let's take the extreme extreme cases because that's where you know we commit a lot of mistakes uh let's take the example of uh, you know march 2020 when covid struck us and uh, the markets uh were going down and in hindsight it's very easy to say that it was bottom we should have bought this uh even if you are not bought but you should not be selling at least at that panic level because if you sell at that panic level your portfolio will remain just 25% you know because that has uh, gone at least 4x in multiple cases i've seen 4x uh, and if you end up selling at that level you will not be able to make uh, money so at least control yourself when others are or market is uh, you know behaving in certain ways uh, many a times uh, doing opposite of market what market is doing may help you uh, and uh, uh, this is not only true in terms of uh, in terms of larger market but it is also applicable to individual stock so we may react to many a times to adverse news uh we may end up reacting to you know price movements uh which may be true from the traders perspective or you know technical chartist perspective but if i am an investor looking at it from the long term perspective if i had done my work on the company and if i had no other reasons other than you know price movement uh i should have a second thought about uh, going away from that investment so i should write down my investment thesis understand that and then understand the risk and uh, you know make a long term commitment in those companies so that's very important and behavior control uh, comes in into play multiple times multiple times in each and every investment that you make in each and every stock that you make so there is no such investment that you will be making where it will go up only in one direction very rarely it will happen almost in all the cases i have seen that stock goes down and it goes down multiple times before it uh, gives you you know long term a uh, sustainable handsome return uh, right sir so jitain sir uh, a follow up on the same question so basically um, investing individual money is one thing and managing public money is one thing so how we can i mean how difficult do you find it to uh, handle uh, the clients in such situations when the market is uh, undergoing such volatility or maybe period where price correction is happening so how tough it is for you guys 
so uh, luckily we have a very good set of you know clients uh, do understand uh, these behavioral aspects uh, i mean we have been writing to them uh, we have something called as investor forum on our uh, website uh, through which they can communicate with us uh, where we will answer their questions uh, on behavioral uh, aspects as well as on uh, and the the companies under our research uh, if they have any questions on that so uh, uh, during all these periods we keep on guiding them uh, on the behavioral aspects uh, the the good one good thing uh, which we have seen uh, change in our own investing style is after starting orum capital is that you know we are now far more selective because uh, see you will always be judged so uh, uh you know the the kind of companies you want uh, in your research coverage uh have to be thoroughly thoroughly you know uh looked into uh, we look at lot of aspects before you know recommending any stock and that has percolated to our personal portfolios also so uh, there are you know a lot of uh, you know we say uh, no to lot of things uh, and uh, that is very very important saying no because uh, you know in in uh, let's say in current time also you will find lot of ideas coming your way uh, ideas don't come your way when you know, uh, markets are down uh, so these are the times when ideas come your way uh, and uh, it's very easy to you know basically get carried away so uh, the the whole art of saying no uh, is very very important so we have always believed that you know error of omission is fine but error of commission is uh, uh, very harmful so uh, that's the process we have you know developed and uh, it has helped us uh, in our own personal investments also uh, so uh, uh, you know ma- uh, you know managing uh, clients uh, you know basically aspirations and uh, uh, providing them with uh, good research uh, a- you know uh, does require a different mindset uh, than managing your own portfolio uh, right sir so sir we have one question from amaya he is asking what is the best way to play the manufacturing sector do you think india is really prepared on qualitative aspect to take a bite of europe will companies really move out if there is possibility of things settling down in europe so again uh, see we uh, kind of you know uh, have liked this sector for a while now and uh, uh, we are happy to say that you know we were one of the first to get into the capital goods and manufacturing band wagon uh, uh, last year itself uh, and uh, this sector has done well and uh, after you know uh, almost a decade of slowdown Uh, the sector has now uh, kind of turned around it is quite evident now if you see the results if you see the commentary uh, from the companies uh, so uh, specific to europe we don't know how long this war will last and all but uh, but we think that you know uh, uh, we we really think that lot of manufacturing will move to india so this sector i think can be a, a good long term uh, trend we see uh just like you know uh, we kind of like chemicals also uh, from a long term perspective uh, but then again uh, one has to look at valuations whether you are comfortable with valuations or not but yes manufacturing capital goods uh, looks good for some time uh having said uh, all this you know we might even exit some capital goods stocks if if we find this reward uh, is not in favor so just a caveat uh, because we are already sitting on uh, very good returns in some of the stocks right so anirudh you can unmute and ask your question please uh, uh, hello sir uh, yeah we can hear you ask your uh, sir i don't have any question but the when sir is speaking the voice is breaking sir uh, kindly please do the needful so that we can hear it uh, peaceful sir i could hear him properly i didn't pay yes sir input. even i can hear and even the comments uh, some of our uh, listeners have identified anirudh you can try one thing you can drop and uh, try with laptop if the issue persists so nitin sir we have one question on uh, new education policy so one 
person is asking if the new education policy gets implemented then more or less science subject would remain same other subjects might change how much is this going to affect publishing companies second if you are able to quantify in terms of revenue uh, so it is uh, 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 very premature to say that only uh, science will change or only history will change uh, uh, un- unless until we have the ncf so new education policy as you all know nep 2020 has already come in 2020 it's a two years now the follow on to nep is ncf that is the national curriculum framework which works under under the umbrella of new education policy and this is the fifth time ncf or curriculum is getting changed and it is getting changed after 2005 so it's a you know pretty long time almost 17 years uh, we know that how the world is changing almost every 2 3 years our laptops get changed uh, and now we are changing our curriculum after such a long time so it was uh, definitely uh, on the cards it was supposed to happen a little early but uh, better late than never so now it is happening and uh, what i could uh, you know understand uh, from uh, the discussions or various papers which are getting published i understand that this is going to be on a regular basis so every 3 4 years curriculum will get changed it will not be uh, such a long duration after which the next curriculum change will happen so every every 4 years 5 years curriculum will get changed one second is the advantage for uh, publishing companies is uh, all these second hand books uh, so second hand books uh, we may not understand if we are in you know big cities uh, studying in good english medium schools but if you go to a tier 2 tier 3 towns uh you will realize that uh, there is a very large uh, second hand books market which gets uh, overnight discontinued because you you your books are no more uh, uh, in line with the curriculum changes so new books will come and uh, then it is uh, a, a growth of at least 3 uh, 4 uh, years for uh, all the publishing companies uh there are some more angles to it uh, it's not going to be very straight forward there are a lot of things uh, uh one is uh, when the curriculum is getting changed it is not changed from first standard to 12 standard just in one year it is a gradual process it will happen to first standard third fifth seventh and then next year it will be second fourth sixth so odd odd and out uh, odd and even you know classes will get changed in two years uh third is uh, uh this year we are having and since we are t- tracking paper sector very closely again uh, we entered uh, little early in that sector uh, uh, um, we were lucky actually we we made good money uh, and when we were tracking paper sector we realized that uh, uh, and people were saying that it's putting you know a lot of pressure it might be putting a lot of pressure on on paper uh, on publishing companies which is true actually but if you look at it from uh, uh, their side Uh, we realize that it is actually killing a lot of small publishers uh, because paper uh, historically paper companies were selling in july august uh, uh, almost at credit to all the publishing companies uh, papers were available paper companies were struggling to sell in july august but this is the first time at least in uh, known history when paper is not available in uh, in the month of august also so publishing companies are struggling big time uh, especially the one which are not having uh, Uh, strong balance sheets to get the paper from the market uh, and if they are not getting paper on credit uh, they are not able to publish the books and sell it to the book stores and then recovering money over a period of time so that cycle is broken now so all the all the publishing companies which are having good balance sheets uh, which are having corporate structures they are getting again benefited from uh, this uh, uh, change that has happened so this is a major disruption again for publishing companies and uh, good publishing companies are getting benefited so if ncf gets delayed for whatever reasons this is going to remain over there uh, because paper is not available so both these things put together will have a you know uh, pretty good or decent cycle uh, uh, for publishing company right so so jitain sir one question is like how do you gauge the industry is going through depressed earning as uh, during covid hotel airlines had an uh, earning compression but if you talk about today which sector is having same and how do you track demand and supply so again uh, you know a lot of sectors have actually kind of moved up uh, since covid 
uh so again uh, it was quite easy during you know that period to look at you know we kind of you know uh, looked at uh, we could get into hotels we could get into paper uh, we wanted to get into uh, you know uh, the uh, the multiplex uh, but uh, somehow we were still we were waiting for uh, lower levels we couldn't get there uh, but the thought process was to get into those uh, uh, the so it was quite simple then uh, so i am saying you know these kind of opportunities come rarely and if you can pick it up uh, if you have and that's where all these behavioral you know uh, aspects come in uh, you you know that you know uh, uh, that the, you have faith uh, i was always of the view that you know humanity will obviously overcome covid uh, and uh, the need for hotels is going to be there Uh, and you also have to see you know uh, that all the stronger guys who the survivors will make merry and that is exactly what is happening with uh, let's say example hotels or uh, even with airlines or something uh, so uh, that was the thought process that time now you know we are kind of uh, we were uh, not invested in uh, financials though it was it is huge part of the indices you know up, up, upwards of 35% we had 0% in uh, uh, financials and banking uh, just because we were quite sure that this is a sector which will struggle uh, and we kind of waited a uh, lot of our clients did ask us you know why we don't have anything there uh, so we waited and now we are uh, we have you know entered this sector and we are ramping it up and so on so financials and banking is something which we think that you know uh can do well valuations are favorable uh cement is one which we have been saying for some time now uh which we think where valuations are favorable uh so just this couple of sectors uh we kind of like and where uh, one can look at all right sir so one question is sir netan sir a view is requested on steel sector where it is heading which all players will be affecting the most uh, in cycle bo- bottoming out uh so uh in steel actually we have made again you know an entry uh we we completely exited from steel couple of months ago and in fact actually i tweeted about that that time uh but uh, the valuations uh, uh were uh, uh, really mouth watering uh, in some of the companies and the margin of safety was significant so we made an entry again in the steel sector and uh, we believe that uh, worst is uh, over uh, there are a lot of you know things which come during the worst time and duty was the final nail in the coffin kind of you know uh, move that has happened uh, i think that should get reversed uh, uh, it is expected to get reversed but we are not counting only on that i think the demand is still there uh, the prices ha- of uh, uh, of the uh, end products of uh, steel companies have run uh, you know uh, so much so that uh, the the end customers were getting affected now there is a correction in their prices uh, demand is still visible uh, when we are attending the con calls or talking to the management of various consumers of uh, this uh, steel products they are pretty happy about it and uh, there is definitely a very strong demand from their side which is continuing because their sustainability was in question if the steel uh, you know remained at those uh, steel prices remained at those elevated level so demand is there everything is- So if demand remains over there and uh, prices are in check uh, definitely uh, steel companies will make money uh, and uh, and their their valuations have uh, uh, come down uh, in ma- many of the cases more than 50% correction is there in those companies it makes sense complete sense to you know make an entry in those companies so uh, i would like to add one more thing here uh basically you know uh, you see you must also see the balance sheet of uh, many steel companies uh fantastic uh, you know deleveraging has happened uh, they are far far strong from a balance sheet uh, perspective and uh, another good thing which has happened is uh, not a lot of supply has been added uh, you know one of the let's say uh, a psu steel company uh, you see that they have been reducing that and and there are no announcement of any big capacity to be added and so on so th- 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 these two things also are important uh, uh, so balance sheet strength 
is visible, deleveraging has happened, and no significant capacity is coming in. Yeah, yeah, very right. Uh, good point, Jitin. Uh, one more thing is uh, that don't expect uh, you know uh, uh, a multi-bagger, multi-bagger kind of returns from steel companies, uh, which was there from 2017 because their balance sheets uh, were leveraged that time, and there was when when operating uh, you know uh, cycle kicked in. Uh, you had the the uh, leverage cycle helped you in you know uh, making those stocks uh, really rocket. Uh, so it is not going to happen that way this time. Uh, it will give you return, handsome return, but not uh, you know uh, ten beggar or twenty beggar. Don't expect that. Go with minimum uh, expectations. Uh, and when uh, uh, returns are coming in, built on that, uh, see where the valuations are heading, how is the demand, and then keep a close eye, uh, close close watch on those those kind of things, and that, then take the decision to to exit subsequently. But I think uh, we we are we are in in a uh, in a place where uh, the risk reward is in favor for making an investment in a steel company. So uh, again, Prince, I will come with an example here. You know, I think. Uh, uh one of the companies which me and nitin invested in uh, uh i think in the, uh, we, we are talking about 2016 or f- uh, 15 around that mm-hmm. point in time steel company uh, uh so that company was available at a market cap of 200 crores around around that maybe 200 250 whatever uh with a debt of 2400 crore uh now see how you know uh, uh, when a cycle plays out what can happen this company currently is at a market cap of 4,100 crore. All the debt, all the debt is gone, and it is actually a net cash company right now. So these things can happen if you get it right. Uh, but at the same time, the risk was that you know that it, uh, uh, if the cycle didn't turn around, uh, this company would have closed. So uh, those kind of risks are also there. Uh, but I just wanted to bring an example where you know where where. You, cyclicals, uh, if they are played properly, uh, the kind of wealth they can make. Uh, and uh, we are lucky to, you know, basically participate in this story. Uh, and uh, of course, it was Nitin who kind of, you know, first goaded me into it. And uh, this is the company which I had invested in the past cycle also. And I was a bit skeptical, but then uh, uh, we put our heads together and uh, uh, both of us, uh, you know, uh, this is obviously before we even launched Aram and all that, but uh, just an example, you know, how beautifully a cycle can play. And what happens when it comes to 55 rupees, no one will buy it. And when it comes to 2000 rupees, how much volume is it? Have you seen the kind of volume when it was at 1800? It was in circuit actually that time. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. we have been talking about the same thing, buying the pessimism. So, when it's on 55 rupees, everyone runs back. And when it's on 1800 rupees, everyone becomes a hero. It's, uh, it's that way. The market is really, you know, uh, works just opposite the way we would like it to behave. And that is, uh, the, the reason for this uh, is, you know, people look at uh, PE, which is probably the worst parameter to look at. Uh, in rupees mein PE to tha hi nahi because the company was probably loss making 60 rupees mein or whatever uh, the company was loss making and at let's say 1800 or you know 1500 the PE was just 3 or 4 whatever uh, so, so people think this is very low PE people don't understand that uh, this is just not the right way uh, to look at uh, uh, you know uh, the deep cyclicals and it doesn't mean that 1500 the company kharab hai the company is yeah, doing exactly. well, <laughs> but it is not mm. making any subsequent sense for me to hold. Exactly. Sanju, you can unmute and ask your question, please. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Prince. Uh, my question is related to the defense sector. Uh, you know, why is uh, Hindustan Aeronautics flying and Cochin CPR not sailing? Is it because of ROE? And I heard uh, Sanjay sir is also in this spaces event. I also heard him, you know, uh, a couple of days back in, on CNBC. So why is that? Why is that? Uh, are those companies not good? Uh, Cochin Shipyard or Mazagun Dock? Sorry, we will not be able to take any stock specific questions. Uh, uh. So can you give your views on the defense sector, please, now? Yeah, yeah, we are, we are, I mean, we have recommended the defense sector, uh, one of the companies there, 
uh, we like that sector uh, though i think a uh, lot of run up has happened so one should be careful in entering uh, now uh, but uh, yes i mean the thing is you know defense sector uh, uh, that changes were going to happen that was evident i think to in 2015 but then the gestation period for getting all the things in place took many years uh, and that is what people have to understand that you know whenever their government is involved it will take time but uh, now it is taking off you know you are seeing uh, they are having huge orders a lot of you know uh, the atmanirbhar team in defense is playing out and i think uh, this sector will do very well uh, uh, in the future uh, of course one needs to basically uh, Uh, look at valuations and then make entry but yes we are very positive on the sector yeah thank you thank you thanks to thank you sanju so nitin sir uh, one person has asked where uh, about the sugar sector where is the cycle right now has ethanol story actually taken out the cyclicality i think uh, it will be better if jitain answers this because he tracks it very closely than me Yeah, yeah. So, so ethanol, ethanol story is uh, there as uh, sugar. So again, uh, I think I have tweeted many times. You know, uh, basically, that you know a narrative was being built that you know sugar sector is not cyclical. Uh, I don't think that is true. Uh, uh, yes, cyclicality has reduced a lot, and primarily due to ethanol. Uh, I do agree to that. But then. Uh, you know for a lot of companies uh, for some companies you know 60% for a lot of companies 70 80% of their revenues and uh, still come from sugar so one has to track sugar production and so on uh, there is only a certain amount which can go towards ethanol i mean the whole sugar production uh, sugar cane production cannot go towards ethanol uh, we have to understand that so sugar dynamics also one should look at and also one has to understand that there is a there is a political race uh, uh, involved here in the sense that you know government has supported this sector during the tough time by making lot of policies uh, i have always believed that you know whenever government will support uh, when the time is tough uh, government will take something when the times are good so then they will put you know uh, uh, some duties or you know some mechanisms uh, by which you know uh, 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 it will not basically it will not let them make uh, uh, you know huge profits is what i think uh, and uh, uh, cyclicality will be there uh, at current point in time i mean we are already out of the sector we had entered uh, last year uh, and uh, uh very quickly it played out actually to be honest uh, we didn't expect uh, the stocks we invested in doubled in just 2 3 months and uh, from that point in time uh, the risk reward was not in favor so we had exited uh, since then we have stayed out uh, uh, it could be because we found you know some other sectors where you know the risk reward was more favorable and so on so it could be you know our exits could be because of this also uh, that we might still we might think that you know uh, this sector might still do well but then there could be some other sector where you know our risk reward is in favor so we will exit uh, for example you know let's say we expect that you know these sugar companies can give uh, let's say uh, another 30% in the next two years but uh, if we find a sector where we are comfortable and we are reasonably sure that you know this sector can give us you know 60% returns in two years for us it uh, would make uh, sense to you know uh, switch of course we will also look at downside what are the downsides you know? so basically risk reward ratio we will evaluate and uh, act accordingly so that's exactly what played out in sugar for us uh, we exited uh, because we found some other sectors uh, where uh, risk reward was in favor and this kind of worked because the stocks are at the same level where we exited uh, so Uh, as far as sugar is concerned i would say yes cyclicality is there uh, reduced cyclicality is there uh, but uh, some amount of cyclicality is there currently we are neutral uh, right sir so nitin sir which two three spaces you see uh, value is available and you guys are looking uh, deeply and uh, what are uh, one two spaces which uh, you think are overvalued at current point in time and should be avoided or maybe watched carefully 
so uh, there are sectors like cement what jitin mentioned a while ago uh, infra is another sector which is not uh, you know which has not given good return so far it has given almost flat uh, so that's another sector uh, which is going through some sort of uh, pessimism uh, then uh, Uh, uh the emerging opportunity of course in education sector that we talked about publishing sector we have recommended one stock from there as well uh and uh, uh that's an opportunity that is there uh, for, uh, if it works out then it could be an opportunity for a couple of years uh then uh, uh, financial services another sector which we feel should do well and uh, we have moved into that as well very recently we have recommended couple of stocks from there uh real estate uh, is one which has done so far well uh, but we feel that there is some more uh, meat uh, remaining over there so we have we are invested in that uh, hotel and tourism based stocks uh, have done well in last uh, more than one year now it's almost one year uh, five months uh, one one year four uh, one year four months uh, it has done well but we have, we think that it has not uh, reached to the peak valuations uh, peak optimism in that sector so far the peak results peak optimism peak valuations uh, still uh, some time away so we are holding that sector uh, we may decide uh, based on individual stocks uh, whether to retain or exit from uh, all the sectors where i am saying that we are still positive or the peak has not come if we feel that in Uh, any one of these stocks from any of the sectors where uh, you know uh, uh, the valuations are uh, are not comfortable or if any uh, better opportunity is available in other sectors we may make some switch so those kind of technical calls we may continue to take but overall we may still be positive on that sector uh, any addition from jitend sir yeah i think uh, what the person also wanted to know was uh, sectors to avoid uh, So, uh, Nitin, you want to go, or you want me to go? Go to. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, I think so. We have been quite vocal about you know basically all these new age companies uh, which were listing and uh, coming to the market with IPOs. Uh, so we still think you know that uh, though they are you know some of them will be great businesses uh, uh, and will be really big. Uh, at this point in time we will wait uh, because uh, you know the mortality is quite high in these kind of businesses you know uh, so uh, uh, one needs to we don't mind uh, buying a bit higher than what they are now but we need to see some path to profitability and all so that is one sector which we are staying away from but of course we understand that sector uh, in my personal capacity i mean i i am invested into uh, you know uh, uh in in a private equity uh, uh you know uh, firm and uh, we do investments in early stage so our investments are early stage uh but uh, uh, we believe that you know ipo is probably you know when uh, uh basically everything is taken out from the uh, you know it's more of a exit for uh, the early investors and uh, one needs to be careful especially when valuations are so high and also some company which is let's say you know the last round happened at let's say a valuation of let's say 2 billion and if it comes at a 10 billion valuation in just one year you know that you know uh, you could be in for a, you know rough ride and so on uh, so that is one which we have avoided uh, other one which uh, we kind of you know uh, stayed away for uh, some time is it uh, but uh, we are looking at it uh, and uh, if uh, we we were expecting a correction i think correction has come uh, still uh, we are not very comfortable with uh, valuations for most of the companies but if but we are on the hunt for uh, something which is at a, available at a good valuation and so all right sir so uh, nitin sir you talked about infra we have one question on infra that person is asking infra is capital intensive and so is mostly debt ridden so uh, should one go for a basket buy or uh, should be a stock specific how do you pick infra stocks considering their high debt uh, dr- uh, high debt driven balance sheet yeah yeah so one needs to be mindful of couple of things when uh, uh, one is making investment in any of the companies forget only infra 
but any of the companies uh, this include uh, the strength of the balance sheet wherein you see that uh, they are able to service the debt Uh, but if you are taking a risk, say for example, in 2016, what Jitin was talking about of uh, that steel company, where it could be you know touch and go, it was like you know we 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 were getting a, uh, a sort of signals that uh, cycle is turning around. If turns around, then we'll make a lot of money. But that may not be the case with other industry. So each industry may behave differently. Uh, uh, infra or other companies where we have, we have to make investment, we have to be li- little careful. Uh, about the balance sheet strength, uh, uh, we should see that there there is not uh, equity dilution on a consistent basis. If that is happening, then it's a problem. Uh, if uh, cash flows are not uh, in line with uh, the profits, uh, then again uh, it's a it's a poor profit that you are running over there because ultimately you will have to pay uh, if uh, the cash flows are not in line with that. So you have to see the operating cash flow. I have made a lot of you know case studies on that presentations on it. they are on youtube as well wherein i talked extensively especially about operating cash flow uh, so look at all these parameters and uh, then make a call uh, basket approach may not be really good idea for this uh, because the very stock specific investment basket is, approach may work uh, wherein uh, the valuations are uh, uh, in a, at a distress level Uh, industry wide one second is uh, uh, you are not too sure which company is going to perform or everything can perform so you take a basket approach over there uh, again there also you have to see that companies are going to survive if uh, there is high debt over there then you may like to you know reduce uh, 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 some exposure over there or you know limit your exposure on those companies so these are some of the hygiene factors that you keep in mind uh, uh, infra there can be debt but you look at it from uh, Uh, from the balance sheet uh, strength perspective, uh, these are capital intensive businesses, no doubt about it. Uh, but it doesn't mean that capital intensive businesses don't make money. I made uh, uh, good investment in one of the infra companies when uh, it was going through this ent- entire sector was going through a lot of pessimism after you know two thousand eight nine uh, debacle. Uh, so uh, you identify the company based on uh, the this strength, and then uh, you you be invested in those companies from long term perspective. One more important point is uh, the quality of the management because corporate governance can be very significant, very important in these companies. So don't compromise on that. Look at uh, the uh, the uh, the promoters' uh, stake in the company. Uh, look at their uh, you know pledged shares uh, in the company if it is. uh you know below 51% uh, unpledged share uh, uh then be little careful uh in those companies yeah i mean the thing is the uh, i'll add one just one more point here basically nitin already talked about it but then uh, i would say that if you have to invest in infra company uh stay with quality and stay with companies who have been there for a long time have waded through you know past cycles also and uh, come out terms uh so that is very very important uh, because uh, it is not a easy sector uh so if you go down the quality curve you know then uh, there could be serious damage uh, uh, to that particular investment so uh, stay with you know good companies i mean hardly uh, investable companies in that sector you can count on your fingers is what i would say uh, right sir so dilip uh, you can unmute and ask your question hello Am yeah audible uh first of all i would like to thank uh, prince sir for arranging so beautiful session and uh, thanking jitendra uh, sir and nitin sir also uh so the my question is uh, goes like this just a second <clears throat> oh oh i i just missed it am i audible yeah yeah you, you can ask so yeah, yeah. absolute sir yeah so jitendra sir and nitin sir i would like to first know what framework actually do you use to zero down on the stocks uh in your portfolio so that uh, we can sit on the cycles uh, for long wait for it and get the full benefit of it first of uh, the thing is to choose the stocks so how do you actually choose the stock is my question jitin you want to take yeah so again uh, the thing is you know uh Uh, me and nitin we cover a lot of sectors so we are kind of you know uh, having lot of experience over the years in number of sectors i mean we do track uh, huge number of sectors to be honest uh, 
now the thing is we are always on the lookout you know where uh, you know things are not good so uh, and uh, see if you know uh, uh, if if it is a down cycle or if there is a disruption so you have to distinguish first whether it is a down cycle or if there is a permanent disruption uh, and that you will obviously be able to understand if you understand the sector and what is happening with the sector uh, so uh, you know i will give some example you know why uh, how do you basically ideate and how do you uh, uh, you know uh, look at sectors uh, so i can give some example from last year maybe one example from now and so so you will get a sense of what we are talking about so as i have talked before uh, last year for example during the second wave you know uh, hotels uh, stocks got butchered and you know they were basically being priced to extinction almost you know uh, and uh, valuations were very good i mean uh, the whole hotel sector was available uh, i think uh, you know at a replacement cost of uh, uh, 25% or so uh, typically you know i think uh, that is very very mouth watering levels uh, for any sector because what happens is and when these kind of things happen uh, supply will definitely go out of the system so all the unorganized people will go out Uh, uh so we were kind of expecting that you know 20% of the capacity uh, will go out of the system at least for some time uh, and uh, actually that that happened uh, now the the revenge travel and all that is something which is which has taken everybody for, with surprise and has taken us also with surprise to be honest uh, we but we were expecting you know a gradual kind of you know return to normalcy and so on but this happened much faster than we thought that can happen uh, but the idea was you know to buy a distress valuations uh, another thing paper stocks you know the, the uh, whatever wrong was to happen was kind of happening with the uh, this thing uh, pulp prices were high uh, you know input costs were increasing and uh, demand was not there so uh, Uh, you know companies were making losses uh, even the good companies were making losses and valuations were were very cheap and i i actually tweeted a thread uh, about a week back or something on how what what uh, what is the way we thought about this you know and uh, so one company was available at a uh, market cap of 1100 crores enterprise value of uh, 1600 crores this company based on the capacity and uh, reasonable understanding of the paper cycle and uh, uh, and past history and all that you could guess that you know this company will this company can do 800 crores of ebitda in a decent time not at the best time in a decent time uh, in the best time i think it will do more than 1000 crores uh, ebitda per year uh, which can happen this year so this company was available at a market cap of only 1100 crores uh, so when this kind of uh, opportunity is throw up uh, uh, that is where you know basically understanding of the business comes in uh, uh, we talked about financials also now we think you know financials uh, you know uh, worst of npa is behind now you are seeing credit growth and so on so uh, you know basically we keep it simple uh, 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 the key is that you must understand uh, the sectors you are looking at and there are certain sectors we kind of stay away from uh, for example you know tea number of times you know things happen in that sector uh, uh, you know tea prices go up and all that but we over the years i mean i've been studying cycles for very long time i have seen that you know you never make a lot of money in tea uh, even if the cycle is good so we kind of you know uh, pick and choose and we kind of you know we have a bias towards not investing in that sector just because of the history and so on and uh, at, at certain times we do miss uh, some uh, which is fine as long as the what we have is doing well yeah yeah even uh, i would like to add uh, uh, in addition to tea we would not we would have never invested in hotel uh, but we invested primarily because uh, the the valuations were uh, uh, so attractive uh, at the time of second wave Uh, uh it was like you know no brainer kind of a deal so we went ahead and bought some of the good companies from that sector so basically uh, whenever you are selecting uh, it has to be in such a way that risk reward is in your favor and you have to be little early in the game 
when you are going for that sector you may have to displace some sort of patient uh, because sector may be undergoing through a lot of pessimism and you you will have to wait before it uh, you know comes back in the mainstream uh, but that's what uh, behavior is all about and uh, uh, that that gives a lot of comfort in terms of margin of safety and then once it uh, uh, comes back uh, it it uh, rewards you uh, handsomely and uh, so i will like to add and also you know there was a uh, uh, in the question it was that you know to write the full cycle uh, i'm saying that you need not always write the full cycle i uh, uh, we should never have the objection to you know basically exit at the top uh, as long as we have made sufficient money and we keep on evaluating the risk reward uh, uh, at different times and uh, uh we do lot of these tactical things you know though we uh, feel that there could be some more upside uh, we will still you know get out of that position uh, uh, leave something on the table because something else could be attractive and so on so the idea is you know there are multiple ways uh, you can you will want to ride it to the max uh, but that is uh, the holy grail i don't think anybody can do it uh, so you can have some strategies you know that okay this is the kind of return uh, i will be happy with uh, and then uh, if that comes and if it still looks very good i'll tell you one thing uh, you know uh, when uh, all these companies still was doing very well uh, you know it looked very good i mean nobody would want to exit at those point in times uh, uh, but uh, you see that you know when companies start making you know 30000 uh, rupees per ton of you know uh, margins uh, you know that something will give uh, that's just from experience it looks too good to be true you know a company like tata steel having quarterly profit more than tcs uh, and so on so you know that this will uh, give so you you basically exit at this point in time based on the experience uh, and uh, that the uh, Uh, you have to understand that when prices become unremunerative uh, another example which happened a few years back was you know the graphite electrodes prices went up so fast you know that then the cycle uh, collapses uh, because obviously uh, there is either demand destruction or there is there will supply will come so one of these two things happen and uh, that basically uh, then the whole cycle uh, so you should be aware of that i mean we've always been proponent of you know selling uh when things look the best all right sir and you recently tweeted about the same uh, ki we should not be like looking for bottoms and tops the idea is to make a good amount of money so with this uh, nitin and jitin sir i would uh, request you guys to tell what uh, how the idea of uh, orum capital was uh, deduced and how you end up starting this uh, venture and uh, how our audiences or attendees can benefit from your uh, venture so yeah nitin you want to go Yeah, yeah, go go ahead, Jitin. Bhai. No, no, you go ahead. Okay, so uh, uh, Jitin and I met uh, uh, in 2015. Many people do not believe that uh, we met just seven years ago, and uh, 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 and it so happened that when you do good uh, and with all good intentions, uh, I used to conduct uh, you know monthly uh, investor education sessions in Pune. and somebody told me about uh, jitin that time that he understands cyclical quite well uh, why we don't invite him so i spoke to him and uh, he came and presented the, the presentation that you you would have seen in many forums later on uh, cfa forum and many other forums he presented so that was the first presentation he made uh, in, our, in our group uh, it was really an eye opener for me because i was not uh, very comfortable with uh, cyclical either and uh, uh, it has been uh, later on you know we understood each other uh, quite well we understood that our mindset is almost similar although he was uh, majorly into cyclical and i was into value investing and as he initially said that uh, cyclical is nothing but value investing and he was so right about it uh, so uh, our thought process was almost similar and uh, uh, since lot of regulations were there we were not talking about stocks and uh, a lot of uh, now friends and people in circle were talking us to start something and i asked him one day that uh, should we start something and he agreed so we started this with that uh, objective of you know uh, sharing uh, uh, whatever we have learned uh, uh, 
uh, in the form of some surveys so aurum capital was formed and uh, uh, again uh, uh, initially uh, we didn't do quite well actually in first year our returns were not uh, as per what we would have expected in fact our first talk didn't work out uh there was a corporate governance issue which we found out we discovered actually in, uh, in that company that corporate governance issue and what jitain was uh, saying that uh, uh, our investment style actually became more matured when we started uh, recommending stocks to to our client uh, because uh, it was very very important for us to uh, uh, to be very careful while we are recommending any stocks so it helped us to become more mature in terms of uh, the recommendation and uh, today we have two services uh, in aurum capital one is uh, the value investing which was launched on our platform 4 years ago and the second one is cyclical bets uh, small case it is on small case platform and so far on value investing we have given 38 recommendations and uh, we believe that uh, out of 10 three can go wrong but uh, touchwood so far out of 38 uh, two have gone wrong uh, one was the first one which uh, the the first stock that we recommended and where we we found corporate governance issue and we exited immediately because that was something we didn't want to compromise had we kept it uh, uh, and we not uh, and exited it would have been still multi bagger so our investment thesis was right Uh, though we didn't want to compromise on the second part which was more important for us we exited so two stocks have gone wrong out of 38 uh, uh, a lot of things uh, we implemented from value investing perspective and a small case uh, uh, total 29 stocks were recommended in in 18 months and out of that again uh, only one stock we have exited in negative uh, uh, in in that uh, small case so total 67 stock out of that uh, three is where we have uh, you know book losses and uh, uh, and remaining all have worked quite well for us and that's where the returns are uh, we don't want to compromise on corporate governance as i said we we uh, look at balance sheet we look at pessimism in the sectors and then we go and invest uh we look at uh, the cash flows of the companies uh, before we make our investments and we look at lot of pessimism so wherever we find pessimism and little bit of hope of uh, or little bit of signs of recovery in that sector we go ahead and uh, take the chance uh, uh, in in that sector uh, while doing so we also ensure that uh, or we also uh, 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 look at that uh, the companies are not going to die while we are investing in those sectors so this is in brief uh, about how it happened Uh, jitan you want to add yeah so over the years you know we have also kind of you know basically evolved our uh, investing style and all that so previously uh, you know it would be just that you know this sector uh, is not doing well uh, and valuations are good so i mean i would buy then wait patiently that is something which we have loads of so uh, but now over a period what we are trying to develop is you know we are trying to enter when you know uh, there is some sort of you know evidence that you know cycle, uh, sector is turning uh, and so on so uh, that is why uh, and that is exactly the strategy of the cyclical bets uh, small case uh, that you know we will invest whenever we see, feel a turnaround is visible or has just started so the 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 holding uh, the waiting period is uh, you know reduced and so on so that is obviously we are uh, always you know improving uh, 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 uh the way we invest and uh, uh, uh and we have we have to say that you know despite it being cyclical it is a low volatility product uh, so that is something which is uh, possible because you know we have implemented uh, you know some uh, mechanisms uh, where you know uh, we look at risk reward we look at you know downside uh, and so on uh, margin of safety and so on so uh, it has been Uh, very fruitful journey uh, i mean the thing is you know we complement each other in that sense i, I have not seen anybody or rather uh, you know i have seen very few uh, who are as thorough in their work as nitin he will dig so much into uh, every company uh, i obviously do have uh, experience of cycles and i do understand uh, you know uh, past cycles and you know what are the things uh, so there there's a lot of complementary things we have uh, and uh, and that's what makes you know it work uh, and uh, uh, it's just that you know the kind of returns we had you know we want to 
basically uh, say that you know it will be very very difficult for us to you know keep on churning these kind of returns uh, uh, so uh, you know the return expectation should always be moderate uh, anything about 20% consistently is very good uh, uh, we've had far more than that but then uh, i was talking to this, uh, nitin in the morning only that you know we have to be extra careful and uh, extra judicious because uh, to sustain this kind of performance is not going to be easy uh, so we are aware of that and uh, in all humility we say that you know we might you know basically uh, Uh, see some bad periods also in the future we don't know uh, but uh, we'll try our best is what i can say right sir and that's a very good strike rate sir so nitin sir i have seen your uh, many of your videos and you offer often focus about uh, the accounting practices and uh, identifying the red flags so what all uh, i mean we often see companies uh, adhering to financial shenanigans so uh, any any input or any view on that how one should go about it in identifying the basic accounting practices if not uh, all so you know over a period of time what i learned is uh, 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 there are few parameters which we should not be compromising okay and if we are uh, if we are clear about that uh, we'll be able to avoid almost 80 90% of the companies wherein uh, we may see some sort of uh, difficulties or we may be able to identify very early uh, we, you may not require a lot of understanding about the financials in uh, to understand uh, uh, the difficulties in those companies so what are those uh, that one is coming from the cash flow cash flow is the most important what we look at uh, what investors look at generally is the is the pnl why they look at it because pnl comes every quarter while cash flow generally comes in a year or maybe once in 6 months uh, so it's very important to focus on cash flow cash is the thing cash is the real thing uh, pnl profit is not the real thing most of the people may not know that the profit shown in pnl is not the actual money received by the by the company so if it is not the actual money uh, when the when the product is sell, sold on on credit the actual money has not come if actual money has not come it may become bad debt in future and if it becomes bad debt in future it will trouble your pnl again because you will have to do a reverse entry uh, it's a it's a difficult uh, thing to understand because everybody thinks that pnl is sacrosanct and whatever is shown in profit is the real profit is not real profit money has not come if money has not come you are in in problem and that's where uh, people make mistakes and uh, they end up you know buying the companies from fmcg or it where in the cash flows are little more certain in many of the cases and uh, valuations uh, may or may not be working and they miss out on many other opportunities where if this small point of cash flow uh, would help them and uh, you know looking at uh, uh, really good amazing opportunities uh, with lot of productions in of uh, their investment so cash flow is one second comes is the balance sheet strength of the balance sheet look at uh, if there is any equity dilution in the company over a period of time if it is happening how frequent it is why it is happening a very critical point if uh, there is a consistent equity dilution and which we have seen in many of the companies from real estate or infra in the past and all these companies got bust avoid those companies third is uh, you know, from again from from balance sheet is uh, the the debt level if your debt levels are high which are not manageable if your debt level are more than the revenue are earning that is what we have seen in uh, some of the adig group companies in the past Uh, you will not be able to sustain and if you are not able to sustain uh, your investment in equity will be the last one to be paid because uh, whenever there is a debt uh, the bankers or the lenders will have the first right on the assets of the company and not the equity holder they will come last in the queue uh, so avoid those companies if uh, the debt levels are significantly high though it has another side if company really does well operationally and is able to repay the debt Uh, you will have multi bagger in your hand because all this debt will be repaid and uh, that will get converted into the market cap what we were talking about little early so if, keep a fine balance uh, between the survivability aspect very critical aspect and uh, look at the debt level third is uh, or rather fourth is uh, is the quality of the promoter 
uh, and quality of the promoter can come in uh, from multiple side one is of course the holding of uh, the the promoter how consistent is he increasing decreasing what level why is he decreasing increasing and uh, you are knowing about that industry would also help ask lot of questions uh, in the con calls or ask the questions from their competitors about this company whenever you are doing that research uh, that will give you uh, lots of insights about about that company ask in the market Uh, you know, do a lot of scuttle butt about that company. Uh, you will come to know a uh, uh, lot of things uh, uh, which you, which may not be available in public domain directly, uh, and it is not an insider information because you are doing primary research about that company. So you'll you'll understand that. And very very important is uh, the the quality of the promoter. So these are four five uh, uh, very extremely important factors beyond P and L. So P and L is the last thing. Look at. I start with cash flow, then balance sheet, that level, uh, uh, equity dilution, and promoter quality. Yeah, Jitendra sir, anything uh, more you have to? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, uh, there is no substitute for you know promoter quality. Uh, uh, so uh, see, over the years, I have also made in my career, I made mistakes uh, where I have invested in uh, uh, not so good promoters and all that. uh but over the period uh, kind of you know learned these things and uh, understood that you know uh, uh promoter quality is so important and how do you judge promoter quality i mean there are so many uh, you you need to put in some hard work you need to read annual reports you need to see what they have said in the annual reports and uh, what they are doing subsequently you need to you know most of the companies uh, in our investable universe would uh, actually be doing con calls uh, not all but most of them uh, so you you know uh, you listen to or uh, read uh, the con calls uh, for a long period in time and that will tell you you know uh, about uh, what the management says and what it does and so on so basically what you can do is you can make a, a kind of you know uh, a picture about the management uh, if you if you do all these things uh, and then you also look at you know uh, past cycles what they have done what are the margins what are the uh, you know uh, look at you know what are the good cycle margins what are the bad cycle margins uh, how are they are in comparison with the uh, competitors and so on so that will tell you a lot about you know the promoter quality and that's how we build the picture about the promoter quality uh, apart from all this uh, you know uh, balance sheet uh, uh, things we look at uh, because uh, uh we 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 always like promoters who you kind of you know who uh, under promise and over deliver uh, those are the kind of promoters who actually make a lot of money for you uh there uh, i i'll give an example you know few years back uh, there was a company uh, which was into printers and so on uh, you know the promoter was uh, uh, all over tv all the time giving huge big big projections uh, and so on uh i i kind of always don't like those kind of promoters to be honest uh, and uh, i did some digging because some of my friends had uh, you know uh, 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 huge quantity in this company they requested me to look at it and uh, i did some scuttlebutt i did some you know i talked to a uh, uh, lot of people in the industry i talked to you know Uh, some of their customers and so on and then i kind of realized that you know there is something seriously wrong with this company and uh, this company it was i mean japanese company uh, we all know what happened to that uh, but MNC, i think MNC, no, no, not japanese mnc pedigree because that was one yeah, of the mnc that we have <laughs> mnc mnc japanese mnc yeah yeah uh, uh so uh so these are you know subtle things which uh, you kind of look at and over the years you kind of you know also try to understand the body language of promoters and so on uh we we would rather talk to the pro, uh, you know management on con call than meet because there would be some promoters who are so impressive that they will you know impress you so much uh and so uh, you know and most of the times we actually avoid you know meeting promoters uh, Uh, uh contrary to what lot of people say uh, uh that you must meet the promoters we may meet actually after you know significant amount of time has already gone while we exactly. invested uh, mm. so for example i invested in a company uh, a year and a half ago 
and this year mm-hmm. i made uh, just a, you know mm-hmm. uh, a month back so 18 months i already gone in that investment after that i am meeting him and when i saw that uh, what he was uh, saying he is executing and then uh, you know mm-hmm. we decided to meet uh, otherwise uh, 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 going on the con call is a better idea as jitin was saying yeah yeah so uh, some of the software aspects also uh, to to point out just one more example that i would like to give in addition to what uh, you talked about the, of that japanese company so uh, market is a place hai na bada mazedar hai yaar ye yahan pe kya hai na bahar hum bolte hai na kisko ek bar murkh ban jaye to bar bar nahi banta hai market aisa hai yahan pe wo multiple time bhi murkh banate so i'll give you an example of a chaddi banyan wala company uh, abhi wo ek chaddi banyan wala jo company hai na wo 2013 mein 14 mein usne bada story mara okay i'll achieve 1000 crore i am you know becoming uh, 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 next this company or that company aur wo company 25 26 rupees se seedhe 75 rupees hua okay aur uske baad kuch execute to hua nahi to gir gaya 2015 ke baad and it came down again back to uh, 25 26 level and then after 5 years he came back with the same story what he said in 2012 thousand crore and same story was there in all you know media coverages i looked at uh, the article which were published in 2012 exactly the same and then again the stock was four bagger it reached <laughs> it, 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 it uh, this time it went beyond 75 it reached 100 and again it is back to 23 in 2022 <laughs> so yahan pe na wo multiple time murkh banana ka kaam hai aur company ne naam bhi change kar liya abhi to wo chaddi banyan wala company ka naam bhi change ho gaya abhi Yeah, yeah there was one darling also some time back i think uh, you know uh, uh, and some marki investors were also invested into it and it was very very clear that probably was i think the fourth or fifth name of this company uh, you know uh, and uh, promoter quietly offloaded everything and you know uh, investors are screwed uh, so not everything is very bright all right sir so some of our audiences who are facing uh, issue with the voice i request them to kindly refresh or try with uh, from their laptops uh, some of uh, who were experiencing and trying from laptop have uh, got the voice right and moreover this session is recorded so our apologies if you are not able to hear it live you can revisit and we'll be sharing the recording also yeah so next question is from kumar saurav sir he is asking please provide a framework for valuing in industrials and how do you interpret current valuation with industrials with respect to tailwinds and longevity of the cycle so uh, i mean the thing is uh, we think that you know uh, uh, these companies will do well for quite a while uh, i think you know the best way to look at valuations is you know i think Uh, you would look at is ev ebitda uh, that that is something which uh, uh, you you can look at uh, i mean how much you want to uh, give value to that the, i mean uh, at what value what ev ebitda you will be comfortable at that is something for personal uh, to decide uh, we also have to see that ebitda is going to be a moving figure uh, so you need to understand also you know how how these companies are going to do in the future and uh, so basic industry knowledge is very very important but uh, from a valuation perspective i think ev ebitda is probably one of the uh, better parameters to look at all right sir so nitin sir hey i sorry how to leave now friends uh, uh, so you guys carry on uh, uh, sorry about that and thank you for uh, you know your time uh-huh. Uh, there's some work that is there, and it was already scheduled. So right, sir. Uh, right. I'll, I'll Sorry, on my part, I didn't ask on the time. So there were many questions. So it was really nice having you both, and uh, it was really insightful. And perhaps uh, we will. Uh, love to host you some other time as well so it was really insightful and uh, people can visit today's session over recordings so thank you i can yeah, yeah, please, i can stay yeah. for 10 more minutes yeah yeah, yeah sir yeah. so i'll be uh, yeah. yeah yeah thank you nitin sure. sir thank you thank you prince thank you to thank you everyone
so so uh, jitain sir one question is uh, again on the paper sector so one mukul has asked the valuation of paper sector after the recent move up so if demand is so high then why none of the big players are announcing capex to capture the demand yeah i think uh, so one thing you have to understand that raw material in india is not uh, you know ample you can't expand too much Uh, uh if you expand then you will have to depend on you know uh, importing uh, your raw material and so on so uh and another good thing is you know the uh, maybe the companies realized all this uh that you know uh, expanding at this point in time uh might not be a good idea that's you know basically uh, uh wait for some time uh the thing is you know uh, i don't think the companies themselves uh new that you know such good times will come so fast uh, to be honest uh, but uh, the uh, you know uh, uh, a turnaround was definitely something which we were expecting uh, but what has happened is you know uh, this russia ukraine war actually also acted as a you know big uh, tailwind uh, so we have to understand that you know that is something which uh, has benefited the sector because uh, pearl prices are strong because of that and uh, uh, and uh, you don't know i mean we we need to keep on tracking whether companies announce uh, 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 expansion or not uh, because uh, quite a few have actually gone through expansion recently only so uh, they might want to you know basically wait uh, deliverage and so on uh, so not expanding is actually a good thing uh, for the paper cycle all right sir so we have another an interesting question that person is asking murugappa group acquired power company it's an opportunity but when blackstone acquired some real estate uh, company so till now that has not been fruitful so the narrative is same when good management takes over things would change but other things to watch out in both the cases if uh, uh, the co- companies are not doing well so again uh, you know there there are host of factors you know real estate is quite cyclical in that sense uh, you know and a uh, uh, lot of times you know some of these uh, sectors uh, or uh, you know this uh, uh p firms buy these companies and then they kind of realize that there are a lot of skeletons and all that and and that is happening with many companies so it does take time we are we are very skeptical actually and uh, there are many examples where p firms have taken and then uh the company has not gone anywhere in fact uh, they have come out you know, a lot of clean up is happening and all that uh, and that puts a lot of pressure obviously on the stock, stock price so th- you should be mindful of that also that you know these things can happen uh, so uh, again there is no holy grail or there is no single answer for this uh, uh, some companies you know uh, it could be that you know the cycle the somebody acquires and the cycle turns and it might do well and for some companies you know it could be that they acquire and cycle goes down so they might not do well so something like that also can happen it's very difficult to you know uh in point uh, because there are too many moving parts right sir so sir for a layman like uh, how one should decide whether an individual is fit for uh, investing in cyclicals uh, or he or she is not uh, fit i mean how to gauge that thing so again uh, it is lot of it is behavior you know i think uh, we can't stress you know uh, the importance of behavior uh, you know it's a very patient game and it's a very lonely game uh, at least you know the way we invest uh, so when we are investing nobody is looking at that sector there are no reports uh, nobody is interested in it and that is when you get value right uh, when nobody is looking at it that, so uh so if you have that mindset then you can go for this cyclicals but understanding of cyclical i think everybody needs to have, uh, is what i think at least market cycles uh, people should understand uh, if not the business cycles uh, uh, market cycles people should understand the same fmcg companies uh, you know uh, 
will have a long period where despite growth they will not give any stock returns and uh, with similar growth uh, will give completely different returns in same period and, you know i always give example of a large fmcg company which you know uh, from 2001 to 2011 uh give zero return despite you know the top line doubling in uh, that period uh, and of course bottom line also going up uh, not to that extent but still going up significantly uh, and in the next 10 years again top line uh, doubled uh, and bottom line uh, was slightly better than the previous uh, this thing but still uh, no reason for this stock to be 10x in this uh, 10 year period uh against a zero return in this so market cycles are at play uh, starting valuations matter a lot uh, uh, so i am not a proponent of you know buy at any price uh, uh, so simple thing people can do is you know look at uh, uh, on a two leg screener or something you know what is the 10 year growth rates uh, uh, what is the you know 10 year a uh, growth rate in sales and all that 10 year 5 year 3 year you can just gauge that and then what is the stock cgr over this over that period uh if if you know you are seeing that you know the 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 sales and the profit growth is let's say 10 12% and the stock cgr is 30% then there could be a good chance you know your margin of safety is very very poor uh, that you this stock might underperform a lot you know so simple things like this can be done uh for the uh you know the seemingly non cyclical companies also uh, sir one uh, take like i have uh, myself experience and even uh, majority of people uh, feel like like when it comes to advisory or some sort of consulting an expert people are hesitant they want to try things on their own even when they are not capable of so we also know that there are uh, people who are on the ethical side of uh, selling things or maybe advisory and there are uh, many people who are into mis selling also and it it is very difficult to uh, segregate uh, between the two in initial phase but again seeing the importance of advisory you have any view for our audiences like if they are starting their journey how they should go about it if they themselves are not capable of uh, investing it the right way so we cannot hear you sorry 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 i was on mute uh, very sorry so uh, what i want to say is that you know uh, if you want to invest directly then you must you know uh, learn the basics you know you must understand uh, valuations and so on so basically there should be some understanding which is required uh, buying on you know basically what they call as tips is something i think uh, is a is a road to disaster you know uh, uh some sometime or the other you know you, you will go wrong because what happens is uh, how will you build conviction conviction can come only when you when uh you do your own study and you you understand things you understand the company you understand the uh, the sector and so on uh cyclical non cyclical doesn't matter for even a growth company let's say you want to invest in fmcg company you need to understand the company right you need to understand the valuations and so on you need to understand what the com- uh, who are the competitors and so on so those things are required if you want to do it directly if not then you know it is always better to uh, take help uh, is what i would say not because you know uh, we are uh, uh, you know uh, we have a firm doing that just uh, that you know uh, uh, it is it is always you know Uh, you don't self medicate if you are if you fall sick and so on so there the there will always be you know uh, good people there will always be bad people in the in the industry and there will always be you know good doctors there will be bad doctors and so on so every industry will have uh, different kind of people uh, uh, so basically you need to you know search for good person or you know uh, if your expectations are moderate then best way is to go the mutual fund way you know uh, uh, but then uh, mutual fund obviously we all know that they have their own set of limitations and so on in the sense that you know they will be far more diversified than 
what uh, and then they will give that kind of return obviously uh, only uh, but at, but if market corrects uh, hopefully they will fall lesser and so volatility will be low in uh, mutual funds and so you need to decide if you want to uh, learn you can take uh, you can you know uh, basically uh, uh, do it yourself start small uh, keep on learning make some mistakes and so on but uh, you know i would say you know first thing first preference should be given to you know that you can do it yourself uh, and that is the reason you know me and nitin we always shared our experiences uh, despite having all this because uh, we always believe that you know uh, uh, best way to do it is you know do it yourself but uh, one should not be uh, but, but one should do it in the right way that is also important one should not have any ego uh, Uh, that you know, no, I will do it myself without understanding. All uh, right, sir. So, sir, uh, one question: like you and Nitin sir are working together since two thousand fifteen. So, if uh, you have some idea and Nitin sir has some other views on that, so how you come to a conclusion uh, whether uh, the space is investable or not? How the process? Is? no so again uh, so in that sense see, we we understand each other very well uh, that can happen once in a while and then we will you know we will let it go even if one of us say that you know this is something which we we need to avoid we will let it go there is no ego in this uh, at all uh, both should be comfortable that is uh, key criteria so once in a while something like that uh, does pop up you know where maybe nitin likes it but then Uh, the the idea is you know if i don't like it then i have to convince him uh, and we are both reasonable in that sense you know and if i like something and nitin doesn't like then he will convince me and we will get convinced uh, since we understand we, we uh, the thing is that you know i know that nitin will not say no just because of that he would have his reasons and uh, uh, that that trust and uh, you know uh, mutual uh, understanding we have Uh, right sir so we have another 5 minutes with sir if any questions from the attendees uh, they can send in the request i'll approve and in the meantime jitend sir you are a proponent of uh, bottom uh, i mean bottom down i mean and the stock specific approach so have right. you ever i mean you also look for a basket approach sometime or it's like stock specific only no so i mean the, the thing is you know uh, uh basket approach is is always better uh on an individual level uh, but uh, let's say when you are running a service uh, you you can't have 40 stocks in the service you know we have kind of limited to 20 stocks so we might have two or three uh, at the most like for example in paper we have two uh cement we have two uh, capital goods we have three so uh, yes uh, we do apply the basket approach uh, there also in personal i might have you know let's say in capital goods i might have five investments uh, because i uh, you know uh, uh, i can also look at the smaller companies which uh, or the riskier companies for myself uh, but uh, that might not be a right investment for uh, clients or that it might not be liquid enough for our clients to buy and so on or the market cap it would be you know below the market cap uh, which uh, uh you know is needed for us to recommend something and so on so uh, those things can happen uh but uh, i think basket approach is a good approach uh, investors can def- investors should definitely look at that so for example let's say in financials you know we don't mind having three of such a vast uh, you know uh, field so banking and financial there could be case of you know three or four bets in your portfolio and so on Uh, right sir i think i have many requests but i'm not saying due to twitter glitches uh, never mind uh, we can uh, have another round with uh, p moram sometime we will request them again so jitin sir one last thing i had uh, one comment from a uh, attendee he was asking like uh, you had offered some discount uh, recently on completion of four years so shall that guy is asking is is it still continuing or uh, that has been uh, i mean stopped so any any input on that 
so uh, so basically on our website it is continuing uh, uh, on small case uh, it has stopped uh, because that was uh, till the 10th uh, it was a very big discount on small case actually we had given 50% off so it was definitely for a limited uh, period so that is uh, uh, that is uh, small case platform uh, has offer code and all that so that offer code has expired so you will not be able to use it uh, so uh, but uh, we might have some smaller <laughs> discounts uh, of course uh, if anybody is interested they can write to us yeah but the, yeah that but that one the 50% off on small cases uh, over here yeah thank you sir so again those who have uh, interest and want to contact they can directly contact so they can get to know about the discount and uh, other things on the website itself so jitain sir uh, thank you so much and thank you uh, please pass on my <laughs> good wishes to nitin sir as well it was really insightful from your end and thank you for sparing uh, 90 plus minutes for us and it was really helpful so we couldn't take too much request due to twitter uh, twitter glitches but again we can always have a second round of uh, conversation it is always pleasure listening to your audios and nitin sir's uh, theory so thank you so much for your time sir uh, any closing yeah, remarks for uh, any closing remarks or any sir uh, means any uh, what what we say for our beginners in the investing uh, journey so any inputs for those uh, that so uh two things you know uh patience very very important and uh, do not have loss aversion it's, this is one aspect which is not discussed much you know a uh, 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 lot of people have loss aversion uh, so if you are wrong then you need to book a loss if required uh, that is some that is a fundamental mistake many people do a lot of beginners do and uh, second is obviously they lot of times don't have patience uh, so these two things uh, i think are very important so thank you prince uh, for hosting this and uh, we are sorry uh, for the twitter glitches if anybody said uh, maybe uh, in the recording i think everything will, will be clear because i could hear everything what it is said and what i said except maybe for 5 or 10 seconds of total 90 minutes so i think i hope the recording will be good uh, uh, and and thank you so much for uh, you know on a saturday evening uh, spending uh, 90 minutes uh, listening to us and uh, 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 have a good you know uh, weekend and uh, happy independence day to all of you yeah same to you sir and thank you so much and we see many popular faces uh, listening to our uh, spaces patiently velumani sir deepak sir and many more so thank you for everyone who have uh, listened to our spaces very patiently and guys if you are uh, liking our spaces kindly connect with our handle so that in future also we can uh, Uh, you can be a part of uh, conversation which basically the social responsibility which uh, jitain sir and nitin sir always talk about is a two side thing we learn from each other and uh, it is always uh, good to give back to society so four five decades of experience of team orum has been shared today so kindly revisit to recording on our handles uh, we will uh, i mean it will be available for next 30 days and if uh, other uh, i mean recording space or wealth podcast has recorded they will also place it on youtube for uh, the benefit of uh, masses so thank you much uh, thank you so much and uh, we'll see you all again thank you so much for listening patiently and happy independence day in advance to everyone bye bye everyone thank you thank you sir.